been an activist, I think, most of my life. I was, I was born before the state of Israel. I was born in 39. And the first words I ever heard was the fear in my family's, my family's voices when they talked about a place called the Warsaw Ghetto. It was the last fight of the Jewish resistance in occupied Europe. Um, so I was very aware of being Jewish. My friend's family had in, in South Africa had perished in many of them, their grandparents, their aunts, their uncles had perished in the Holocaust. So it was, uh, it, it lived with me and you were born and brought up with a sense that you too could one day be affected. It had a huge resonating effect on you. And one, it was one of the reasons why I wanted to go to Israel because I thought that was an insurance place. But I also grew up in South Africa and I began to see oppression around me and I began to feel my own privilege. And I thought Israel was a place which where equality existed. This was in the 50s, long before the Six Day War. And then I went to Israel with a group that I joined. I was part of a Zionist group. I'm, I was a strong Zionist until I went to Israel and found out what was really going on. And it shocked and horrified me and betrayed me and really turned me upside down. I, I became very dismayed, very unsure of myself and almost in a state of confusion. It took me a long time to recognize what was really happening. But the Six Day War in 1967 was the final nail in the coffin. And I realized what Israel really was. But meanwhile, I fought against apartheid in South Africa. And that was my first objective. And then when that was, when we achieved the new South Africa, I turned my attention to what was going on in Israel. And I took, I was very active in Jewish groups against the occupation, Jewish groups for Palestinian rights. And I used to say, you know, I used to reflect my views on my Facebook page and on my Twitter feed. And then in 19, in 20, um, 18, my husband died very suddenly and it was a terrible blow to me. We were very close. And then just after that, I got breast cancer. And just after that, I heard from the Labour Party to say that they, uh, that I had uh, to advise, to warn me about my behaviour because my behaviour, because of that I was upsetting people because of the things I wrote on Facebook and on Twitter. And then there was silence until two years later when they sent me a notice of investigation pointing out all the anti-Semitic comments I'd made. Every single thing was about Israel. And the notice it, they went on. I couldn't talk to anyone. It was a major shock. Both times I felt a body blow. It was a body blow. How dare they? These people who knew nothing, had experienced nothing about being Jewish, knew nothing. They thought they knew everything. And basically they were taking... There is a division in the Jewish community between those who have commitment to Israel and won't hear anything, and those who believe that what Israel is doing is wrong, and that we have a responsibility because we are Jewish, because of what has happened and our experiences, 
to, to stand up for what is right. And the Labour Party has chosen to side with one section of the community, that section of the community that chooses and wishes to silence Jews, what some people call Jews of conscience. And it's a terrible thing. They have no right to come in to tell us what is right and what is wrong. Who are they? They talk about labor values. They, these aren't labor values. They tell us what we should and should not believe. I could talk and I won't talk about the one particular um, tweet that even Krasnow, their Labour Party barrister, who I understand is a strong supporter of Israel, uh, mentioned, she actually mentioned in court, she attacked me personally for that tweet, almost implying that I was a, a supporter of Hitler or something. This is the, the, this is the extent to which they will, will go. And as a as an older person, as someone who's fought, I've been on anti-racist marches since I was, goodness knows when, I haven't stopped fighting racism, I haven't stopped fighting for equality. And I look at the Labour Party and wonder where they are, because it seems very difficult to, to recognise that a party that can treat an old woman like me with a long history, with such contempt, and now, and they are, they feel very, they feel very, their tails are up because they, they've won their case. But as I say, it's a pyrrhic victory. They've shown that their commitment to their membership, their membership, who are the bulk, who are the body of the Labour Party, is, is not worth much.